Okay folks, this is Bill from Little White Dory bringing you an update on our little chickens. We now have three categories of chicken. Little chickens, baby chickens, and chickens. This is little chicken Cleopatra. Cleopatra is one of two of the similar color. The other one is coming around the back and is nubbins. Nubbins and Cleopatra, the difference is Nubbins has a little stumpy tail, hence Nubbins. And Cleopatra has a big tail, and we're hoping that doesn't mean she's a rooster. She's filling out um, the same speed as everybody else. They just got some tomato thrown in here. They're having a field day gobbling up the tomato. They ate all the greens I've put in here. And they're now on a stone house mill organic non-gmo starter mash for which they will be on until they start laying eggs at which time they will go to a stone farm mill or stone house mill stone house farm I'm not sure it's up near Hudson New York it'll go on to their layer mix or layer mash and as you can see they're all very interested in the the, the food. Everything's fair game to be picked up and played with. Um, that's Nubbins. And uh, their accommodations are a three gallon water font at this point, which is working out well. They can't get to anything above it so it stays fairly clean and I can easily reach in and dump it. I have a, you know, it's it's a nesting box that none of the girls I had before liked so I threw a little sand and a little baby grit in here and threw it in within minutes they were doing some dust bathing I've got a little jungle gym back there that I built for them they love that they run it all the time and then when this is a greenhouse I have this shelf and this shelf whoops guys trying to make a jailbreak here they're starting to get a little precocious so I might have to close the gate or else I'd lose my first one out the uh, front door. Go eat some more tomato. There we go. So over here I just put a box from uh, BJ's up to make or simulate a little bit of a cave effect on that shelf. And then there's a perch in the back which is where they've been staying now. Anyway, we've got uh, pretty good accommodation here. I'll show you the grass behind it. We've got two locks, one here and one down below. But the grass from behind it now, when I moved them out here at first, I think they just lost their minds on the grass. And you can see that there's a noticeable, you know, uh, scarified, rummaged, pulled out, dug down. The next one was on this spot here. They didn't like the asparagus string beans. I guess they don't like legumes. But they ate the grass down. They did a good enough scratching and foraging. And now they're in this location. I just moved them there today. I had the back up a little bit because there was potentially some rain coming our way. But this is now closed uh, a little bit, enough to let hot air out. I mean, there's a little bit of a greenhouse effect up top. But down below, the temperature's not so bad. In fact, I think I'm going to probably adjust this a little right now. There we go. I'll come back out later and... If it's raining, I can put that back up. So this will just, I'll, I'll, cl I'll clean this up a little bit later, just roll it up. But otherwise they stay open on both ends. And you can see that there's a box in there. I have a video camera here too, so I can watch them from inside the house. I don't know if that's set up right, but it'll work for now. Over here, we've changed some things in the back. I'm kind of uh, glad to see that what I was hoping would happen is happening which is that my grapes have grown over my four foot wire fence. It's a, I think it's a two by three vinyl coated wire fence in black that goes all the way to the back. And I have one, I'll call it a door, cut out in the back behind those uh, cow peas. But there's grapes now growing along here. Um, I have a red something or other in here that I'm going to have to trim the grapes off of maybe even contemplate moving it but 
the uh, the grapes served their purpose they grew rather well I see some right here right now which I will gladly throw to the chickens they'll get them later there's not many left uh, this didn't have a tremendous amount I'm seeing some actually these look pretty good right here Ah, oh, that's tough to get my hand in here I'm gonna lose the whole thing there we go and some dropped here that they won't be able to get although I should look yeah see this there's, there's a lot of cases where there's just the one grape but this oh wait you know what I do see this I'll do a little pruning right now that should go that way this over to there ow Ooh, that's uh what do you call it <laughs> butternut squash I think I'm pulling so this has got to go this way the other way around there we go I've got enough butternut squash I'm not worried about them oh there we go there's some nice big pile of grapes let's get them out of here if I can and they're gonna see they're already on them they'll gobble those up no time at all so I see just a few more here I'm gonna grab them while I'm here you know sometimes I feel like I'm reaching into the the hornet's nest and I'm not much for editing so you're gonna see all the, the bad video here too and one more last clump and there we have it a bunch of grapes for a bunch of girls and they'll all come over and get some so now this is the vegetable garden or I call it the chicken garden these three uh, raised beds here are for my chickens with the exception of the carrots that I'm still growing these will be planted very shortly with some winter stuff and covered with plastic so it'll be growing long into the winter uh, I'm a little lazy but I'll get to it then back here I have my cow peas or my black eyed peas I'm gonna go harvest pumpkins uh, I don't know if you can see the pumpkin from here I can't see oops there we go uh, pumpkin 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 I gotta find a little dish where is it there so somewhere back in there is a big pumpkin and we've got a couple of them so we're happy about that and the butternut squash they're all over the place literally climbing all over We've got a dogwood that turns red in the winter. We've got a rosebush and marigolds. We've got lots of sunflowers this year. They did really, really, really well. Um, you kind of get a feel for what we've got going on here. I think I'm zoomed in too far. I can't tell. It's hard for me to see when I'm outside because the view in the camera is not so good. But uh, tomatoes. Probably another 25% of the tomatoes still to go going into the beginning of September that's not bad my wife just pulled a whole bunch off today uh, this she was telling me about these are gonna be enormous uh, I'm assuming they turn red but the tree is just the bush rather has completely fallen over and I've given up and in here well let's see I see something worth picking This is big. There we go. Now this one, I'm taking it now because it will ripen. In fact, I'll take you to see. Again, this is the, uh, the path here. We had the girls over here. I've cut the grass, but you can see the patch that they worked on a little while ago. We've got our crepe myrtle coming up, looking pretty. We always like that one little rose in the back corner. When it goes, it grows like a beautiful, beautiful pink. Gladiolas are all spent. 
lilacs coming back. The potted plants have seen better days. The roses are doing fantastic. We got more sunflowers over here. We're gonna have an explosion up top there. That's the front of the chicken coop if anybody's interested in seeing it. We've got a motion sensing light so that if a raccoon comes by, hopefully the light will give it a good reason to go elsewhere. But here's some of our tomatoes. This is after we've given at least this many away three times yesterday. So figure this times four is where we were at yesterday. And we just, Nancy just brought some stuff in, but we're just giving it away now. All right, folks, a little over 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to take you in for one last surprise. This is something that we're crazy. We should have our heads examined. J uh, Jake, this is the byproduct of chicken math. Anybody knows what chicken math is, it's the inability to say no to a baby chick. Especially when you know you have the facilities to take them. And you just did a batch and everything went fine. So you do the same thing over again. And this is what you wind up with. A bunch of baby chickens. So we picked up six more baby chicks. We have um, two mysteries right there in the middle. We don't know what they're going to be. And the others are supposed to be Buff Orphingtons. So four Buff Orphingtons and two mystery chicks that Nancy has been trying to figure out. I guess I should turn this this way. Um, Nancy has been trying to figure out what they might be. If you have any guesses, we'd love to know. Leave it in the comments. Um, Nancy thinks that they might be um, barred rocks or barred something. I don't know. I don't know what they could be, but they're pretty as heck. And um, Nancy named one of them already because it looks like a bit of an owl. This is the dark one right here. She has named that one Hooter or Hootie. Yeah, Hootie. Because it's at the face of an owl. And she wants to name the next one over Blowfish. So Hootie and Blowfish. And I said, no, not having a chicken named Blowfish. That doesn't work for me. And then we figured at least one of them will be Buffy, but for now it's Buffy 1, Buffy 2, Buffy 3, and Buffy 4. So, their, their accommodations here are uh, a big extra-large dog crate with some kitchen wallpaper sanitas rolled out to make a wall, pine shavings, a cupcake pan because they seem to like playing and pecking at it, it makes an interesting noise, and they just go at it all the time. Let me see if I can turn the heat lamp off and, and maybe we'll see this a little better. Because that's really throwing the red off. Yeah, I think that's much better now. So let me come back over here to a space in the... Am I focusing okay? I hope. <laughs> so the there's the four. Out of the six, rather. And we joked, if we could just get them all one at a time on top of the pie, uh, top of the cupcake pan, that would be a cute picture. But they get a little box to go in to get out of the heat. That's just a piece of uh, something to hold a thermostat, a thermometer rather. The temperature sensor down beneath so I know the temperature. And right now I'm showing that it is 86 degrees above them. And this will shut off if it gets over 90. So I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to go back to other things, but you can get a better view from here that this is a dog crate up on a table with just wallpaper around the outside edge. Wood shavings. We've got a simple waterer, simple feeder. I've had others, but unfortunately these seem to be the easiest, especially if you're going to be around to change them. And a little bit of a um, hardware cloth box around the water so that the Shavings and stuff tend to fall into it as opposed to go into the water. It makes a big difference. And I just rake all of this stuff back and they flap it all forward again. But that's our setup. Okay, folks, so long from the homestead. Bye-bye.